Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm finally going to be talking about the Kodak Ultra F9, which I've had for about half a year now. I just never had the chance to make a video about it, but I am doing it now, so if you're interested in this camera, then please stick around. So what is the Kodak Ultra F9? Well, much like the Agvaphoto, Ilford Sprite, Double Foam Show, and Vibe 501F, the Kodak Ultra F9 is another reusable plastic camera that takes 35mm film. And to some extent, it is the newer brother of the Kodak M35 and M38 film cameras. And why do I say so? Well, they all pretty much have very similar, if not exactly the same specifications. For instance, the Kodak Ultra F9 has a shutter speed of 1 120th of a second, a 31mm lens, and a fixed aperture of f9. To load this camera with film, open the film door by toggling this lock. Push the film rewind crank out and put your choice of 35mm film in the film chamber. The camera manufacturer recommends that you use any 35mm film with an ISO of 200 or 400. Personally, I use film stocks that has 400 ISO and above because I think that overexposure is a bit better than underexposure. And you can use any number of exposures like 24, 27, or 36 exposures. Next, push the film rewind crank back in. Pull the film leader out a little bit and place it towards the film take-up spool. Use the tabs on the take-up spool to hook the film on its first and second sprocket holes, like so. Then, add a bit of tension by turning the film advanced wheel. Once the film is securely in place, you can close the back door. To prepare the camera for taking photos, turn the film advanced wheel several times until it stops turning and press the shutter button. Do this once or twice until the film counter up top says 1, then you're ready to take your first shot. You'll have to turn the film advanced wheel to cock the shutter every time you want to take a photo. To use the flash, you need to put a AAA battery in the battery compartment under the camera. You can use the camera without any batteries by the way, you only need this for the flash. Turn on the flash by sliding the flash toggle to on and wait for the red light to glow. Once it glows, the flash will fire on your next shot. If you change your mind and don't want to use the flash anymore, simply slide the flash toggle to off. I recommend always using the flash when you're indoors in low light or when your subject is in shadow or is backlit outdoors. To take a photo, cock the shutter using the film advanced wheel and ensure that you're at least a meter away from your subject. Next, point the camera and compose your shot using the viewfinder, then press the shutter button to take a photo. Once you've reached the end of your roll, you will no longer be able to move the film advance wheel to take a photo. The film counter should also show you the maximum number of exposures your film roll has. So depending on your film roll, say for example if it's 36 exposures, then the number in here should max out to 36. Now, depending on how you load your film, you might get an extra one or two photos, but the counter should max out to 36. Once you finish a roll, rewind the film by first pressing on the film rewind button at the bottom of the camera. Make sure that this stays pressed while rewinding your film. Next, turn the film rewind crank clockwise until you don't feel any more tension from the film. After that, you can then open the film door to retrieve the film for development. And here are some sample images. As you can see from these, the image quality is typical to that of reusable cameras with plastic lenses. The center of the image has decent sharpness, but the corners look quite smeared. 
It also has a noticeable vignette, and the image will also have lower contrast, but those can be edited in post. And try to always shoot with your light source behind you or in front of your subject, because the plastic lens on this camera flares pretty bad. But while this image quality isn't on par with some vintage point-and-shoot cameras with glass lenses, they do have the look and character of images taken with disposable film cameras. So if that's the aesthetic that you're going for and you like shooting with disposable cameras, then you'll probably enjoy this one. I also think that you can still get some pretty good photos with this camera, because it's not just about the gear, am I right? Real question though, can you take a selfie with it? Well, this camera focuses from 1 meter and beyond, so if you have a long hand, then yeah, kind of. Anyways, aside from the fancy box that it comes in, there really isn't a lot of difference between the Kodak Ultra F9 and all the other cameras that I mentioned earlier in this video. You'll pretty much get the same shooting experience and image quality with all these cameras. Furthermore, while they bear the Kodak name and logo, Kodak doesn't exactly manufacture these cameras. I think these are typically made by a Chinese company who has licensed to use the Kodak brand. That being said, they're pretty okay and I would say better than single-use disposable film cameras. If you're wondering which reusable film camera to get, I'd say go for the easiest one to get a hold of where you live. The cheapest if you're in a budget, or the one that appeals to you the most aesthetically speaking. Why? Because having a camera that you like will probably make you want to use it more and actually improve on your photography skills. But if you're interested in comparing this with other reusable film cameras, then go check out this video because this is still my favorite. Or go and visit and subscribe to my channel for other film-related videos. Cheers!